Hey guys, today we're going to work on the radiator and the electric fans and hopefully the cold air intake. In a previous video I mentioned about wanting to make it look like the donor vehicle under the hood, which would be a 2001 Suburban. That was my goal, that's what I wanted to do. After putting all the pieces together and trying to make it fit, it was pretty obvious it's just not going to fit that way. The stock Suburban intake uh, requires a lot more room, it's taller, it's just not going to fit within the confines of the OBS. And that's okay. Uh, we're being flexible with this. It's a bit of a rod anyway, so that's okay, even though the engine's basically stopped. So the alternative is, instead of going with the mechanical fan, we're going to go with electric fans. So I've got the radiator, we're going to put that in. That's, that's pretty easy. The fans will mount behind the radiator, between the radiator and the motor, and they're going to be mounted with some brackets that we're going to make and together that will hold the radiator in place and support everything and it works just well. This is a similar process that we went through on that blue 95 that you might have seen in some other videos. So let me show you what I'm going to do. And here are the twins. So start off with, bought this uh, four foot strip of steel. It's uh, some flat stock and it's a uh, one and a quarter inches wide, four feet long, and one eighth inch thick. So it's perfect. It's stiff enough to provide the rigidity we'll need to keep everything in place, but it's thin enough that it doesn't add too much weight and it's easy enough to work with. Uh, something to be aware of, this same piece of metal I would buy at my uh, big box store about six months ago was about $8. Now it's 18 so if you need it, go get it, because for the next few years, it looks like things are going to be going up. Anyway, this is a four-foot strip. We're going to cut it in half. Okay, and looking on the inside, we haven't got the radiator in place, but the distance... Uh, from the bottom of that core support to the top is 20 inches. Now each strip is 24. So I'm going to bend it four inches over. So we're going to get the strip, we're going to come in four inches and measure, and we're going to bend it 90 degrees. And the purpose being that I want it to go across the top because we're going to mount it, I want it to go straight down. And on this side, Unfortunately, where we're going to need to mount it, it doesn't hit at this point right here. It hits at this angle. So we'll have to uh, bend the end of it to contour to fit this. And we'll have to drill a hole in that and move this insert over so that we can bolt it in there and bolt it in here. Now on the driver's side, uh, it's a little different. Down here, kind of hard to see, here's where this threaded insert would be, but um, the bar actually is going to land over here, so I'm going to get another piece of metal and I will weld it to it and that will extend over instead of trying to contour it to fit this. And the bar will come straight down with a brace and bolt right there. Here's the radiator in place. Now it's just sitting on the little rubber uh, isolators that go at the bottom that locate it and give it uh, a little support. And here's one right here on top. These are gonna help space it so that it's up against the uh, core support in here and it's mounted where it needs to be. Now we're gonna put the fans, come back over here. Now I'm gonna put the fans in place in the front so that we can get a better idea of how that's gonna to fit together. I've lowered the hand, fans in place and they are resting on the bottom of the support down there. So they're not gonna slide down. That's exactly where it needs to be. It's supported by the lower uh, core support and the height of it is exactly the height of the radiator. So these are they work out really nice. Uh, there's plenty of room over there. It looks a little snug. There's plenty of room over here between the PCM, power steering hose, fan, all that works out fine. 
Uh, now you can see what I'm talking about. When you're looking directly down here, this is where the steel needs to come down because here would be your supports. So I want the steel to come down just inside these tabs because I'll be drilling holes. Come around this way. I'll be drilling holes in this tab and down there to bolt to the to the strap. And then the strap itself will uh, uh, bolt down there on this little flange right here and on the top. And that'll keep everything in place. And it's the same on the other side. But as I mentioned before, the hole is a bit staggered on the driver's side, but we'll uh, just get a piece of metal to offset that, weld it together, and it, it'll work out just fine. So let's put the straps in place to see how close they are. We'll work with the passenger side first since there's no welding involved. It's just a matter of uh, turning that bottom about, twisting it about 45 degrees to fit the contour of the lower core support. With the strap in place, you can see there's plenty of meat up here to find a place to mount this. It goes straight down and you can see the two areas where the tabs would mount would be here and below that. Okay, with the metal twisted, and I twisted it like this just by, just by putting it in the vise, twisting it with a pair of vise grips. So let's slip it down in place. And you can see with it uh, straight at the top here, the bottom is twisted and meets up with that, with that piece down there just fine. So between that lower mounting point of the of the uh, fan and where it meets the metal down there, I've twisted it about 40 to 45 degrees. So I'm just going to drill a hole in that bottom uh, piece of the core support flange that sticks up there, that threaded clip that has the uh, nut in it, and we'll put a screw in and see how that fits. Okay, here's the clip I'm going to put in. I just uh, used my drill, went under there, there's enough room to drill a hole. I'm gonna put this in place. This is uh, one of the screws taken off this Suburban from somewhere, I don't know where. And it fits this just fine, so we're gonna see if that will fit the bottom of the bracket. I just made a corresponding hole in the strip, and we'll see how that matches up. Here's the clip installed on the end of the bar. At the bottom, it's bolted in right there. We'll be drilling a hole in this flange, and this flange right here to mount to the strap. Okay, the other bar where it comes down, It comes to right over here, and you can see where I want the hole to be. I would drill a hole there, except there's no way to get to it. From there to that hole, three and a half inches would cover it, and it will, I'll weld it to it, it'll come over three and a half inches, drill a hole, and that'll be my mounting hole. So you can see where the steel comes down, and it's approximately three inches over where I need the hole to be. Uh, if I didn't have anything in the truck, I would drill a hole in the core support and be done with it. But with everything in place, there's just no way to get in there and drill a hole. So uh, I'm going to get a piece of flat stock, weld it to here, come over. That's about three inches. And a couple of minutes later, we've got what we need. Thanks to the square tubing, we've got a little piece of metal here. I haven't welded it yet, but this is what it's going to look like. And this is the strip. And here's the other bracket uh, mocked up. Sitting at the top, got the little piece coming across, the screw goes in the correct hole, and it'll work out just fine. And here are the fans prior to installation. I uh, still need to paint the brackets, but I've got the holes drilled and little clips in place to hold the fans. This is on the driver's side, and this is that uh, bracket that comes over for the hole looped over on the top and we still will figure out how we're going to mount it at the top. So I haven't done that. Uh, this is the passenger side holes and the twisted edge with the clip. So we're going to drop it in place and see how it fits. And here's the fans mounted. I had to add a little piece to use an existing threaded hole. I just added a little piece off to the side. Uh, each side of the core support, the little nuts that are uh, inserted in there are not symmetrical. So while on the driver's side, I was able to, to use uh, an existing hole 
the passenger side, it didn't match up exactly. I just welded on a little piece of steel, drilled a hole, and mounted that. And then the center, uh, <laughs> this is actually part of the bracket that held the uh, cable to the alternator from the LS battery uh, harness. So I chopped it up and used this. This supports the radiator. Everything is firmly in place and looks good. Um, still need to take it off and paint it, but the fans are mounted and in place. Gone ahead and installed the cold air intake and it snakes through and comes out just fine. Uh, we still have to do the wiring and we're gonna do that in just a moment, but uh, I wanted to bring you up to speed from the last frame where it showed uh, just the fans installed. It did not have the air intake, the cold air with the air filter. The upper radiator hose is actually the Suburban hose and it has been really sectioned out. I probably took about two inches off this end, about three or four inches out of the middle, and another two inches off that end, and it all fits in there just fine. <clears throat> uh, the cold air intake mainly made this from parts I already had. I did buy uh, this coupling, and that brings, that brings it out just a little further so I could clear the pulleys. I already had this elbow and this piece of uh, three inch, well, actually it's almost four inch tubing. This is the factory suburban corrugated hose that uh, connects to the MAF, which is right here. And then here's the air filter I bought for it. I did make a bracket uh, that attaches to an existing hole down here. It comes up to the center uh, where I drilled one hole. And then the little wing nut uh, that holds it in place is actually the uh, air cleaner wing nut from the 4.3. Uh, I put a bolt from the inside and used a little uh, JB weld to keep it in place and then have just this little, little nut on the outside. So this is firmly in place. I mounted the charcoal canister on its side just to kind of make, give it a lower profile and it catches the vacuum hose here which goes through the core support down here by the AC hoses. Um, Otherwise, we're really ready to go ahead and knock out the wiring on this. One thing I wish I had done, and I told you before when I did the harness, and it's over here, that I had the two wires for the fan, fan one and fan two, or the low speed and high speed. What I wish I had done at that time when I was making this little relay fuse panel was to incorporate a couple of additional fuses and a couple of additional relays for the purpose of these fans. That way it would be all together in one little unit. I didn't think about that at the time, so now I'm gonna have a separate unit, and rather than mount it over here, which there's really not much room now, I'm going to mount it over here in this area along the side of the inner fender. So let's uh, go over to the workbench and I'm gonna get started on the wiring harness for this. The wiring schematic I'm going to use, or the layout I should say, of, of what I'm gonna use, I will include a link to it in the description below. Uh, I'll also tack on a picture at the end of the video kind of showing how I wired the fans. So you, if you wanted to do the same thing, you could do this. Okay, I've got everything laid out here that I'm going to need. It looks like a lot of stuff, but there's some extra parts here. This is my diagram I'm going with, and I will, again, I'll put that in the link in the description below. And I'll also show it to you at the end of the video so you can get a little close-up view. And this isn't something that I dreamed up. This is something that's out there. It uh, is, and I've compared it to many other diagrams. This one looks great. It's very simple, easy to follow. Okay, my wiring. I've got 12 gauge wiring, and I'm gonna run that for my hot. I've got some 14 gauge and some 18 gauge. This will run for my fans. My fan wiring is uh, going to be yellow and blue, which is on this main harness. Now this is part of what uh, uh, attaches to the fans. These connect to the individual fans and they come out to this uh, plug and this is the main harness. And then this is part of that and it attaches this way. Now one thing they did do that was a little different here is that their black is common to both sides for the grounds. The yellow wire extends on through even though this one has a green stripe on it. But this blue suddenly turns red. Well this will power up the fans, but I also want a wire that when I turn on the air conditioning, that it will send a signal 
to also turn on the fan. And that's what this pink wire is gonna be for. So this will attach to the wire that currently goes to my air conditioning compressor so that when I hit the switch to apply power or give the signal, I should say, to the PCM, I want the AC on, that this will also trigger the fan at the same time. So that's why there's a pink wire. You could use any color, I just happen to have pink. So this main harness, we're gonna set that aside. That goes to the fans. We're gonna be working off of this plug. Uh, I've got a couple of relays here. This is a nice junction box I found. Uh, this is on Amazon. Very nice. It's got a place for six relays and half a dozen uh, fuses, which would have been nice to have used this in the first place. That way you would have everything in one place, one central location, and still have a couple of extra options here in case you wanted to uh, add some additional features like uh, maybe some fog lights, uh, high power stereo system, uh, something else that would require the use of uh, some additional electronics. It could all fit in one box. And if six isn't enough, of course they make ones that are bigger. But for the purpose of this, we're going with six uh, for the cost benefit ratio, it seemed to work out best price wise. It's also sealed. So under the hood, uh, once this thing is together and you'll see how it all, how, uh, how it all works out. Uh, these little plugs go in from the bottom side here and for the wires, the fuses, they keep moisture out. And this uh, box has, is lined with a, a seal as well so that it keeps moisture out. So this will be really nice under the hood. In fact, in the future, I will probably be using this style of box on my conversions just because it is nice, looks neat, uh, it's waterproof, which the other is not. And uh, okay, I'm gonna get started here. I'll come back to you. It's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of uh, using your pins and attaching them in the correct areas for your relays and the same for the fuses. So I'm gonna go on ahead and when I get this part done, I will come back and I'll show you where the wires are and why they went where they did. This is the ground wires. These will go to the back of two of the relays and join them together into one uh, connection that'll be on the fender of the truck. Okay, a valuable lesson. Uh, I had to redo the ground wire again for this reason. Where it plugs into the back of the unit, where the these were the relays go on the top. These were all the wires plugged in from the bottom. For this to go in and provide the seal, you have to put these on first. Once you put this connection on, it's a little too big to get through that hole. So you have to feed your wires through here first because this is your uh, silicone seal that goes in the bottom. And then once you get all your wires in there with your clips, you put them in the appropriate slot, snaps into place, and then you can work these silicone plugs down to where they fill in this bottom area here and for, perform that seal. If you go and make all your wires first and then try to get them through these little holes, it's just not gonna work. Now the rubber plugs are made in such a way that they, are, uh, they have the holes on one side and on the other side there's just a thin skin on it. So you have to poke that through. I used an ice pick on the holes that we need that way the center hole, which there is one, doesn't go all the way through and allow any moisture in. Okay, I've got it just about wired up, I believe, but I wanted to show you this before we hook it all together so you understand the orientation. Uh, when you're looking at your relay, like this, this bottom spade right here is number 30, and that's your hot. So this is kind of at an angle here, but I've got my hot coming out on both sides. Each one is gonna to go to a 30 amp fuse. Moving counterclockwise next to it would be your ground. And I've got the two black wires and they come together right here. And I'm gonna be uh, grounding that to the inner fender panel. The top, which was me right here uh, in the orientation, because these are laying kind of on their side, sorry, uh, is number 87. These go to the individual fans themselves. So blue, I have designated as my uh, first fan or my lower speed fan, and yellow as my higher speed fan. Uh, then the next and last wire is the one next to it, which was to the left of the power wire. And in this case, here's the yellow 
This is the wire that comes off of the PCM for the LS. So this would be my high speed fan, and this is my low speed fan. The reason there are two wires connected here instead of just one for my low speed fan is I not only need the signal to come off the PCM to trigger the air conditioning, I also need to connect the other wire to the switch. In this case, it's down here, and this is the wire that goes to the AC compressor so that when I press the button or turn the switch or whatever inside inside the truck uh, to activate the AC, it sends a signal to this fan to come on automatically because you need a fan that automatically runs and comes on with your air conditioning. So that's why there's two there. I'm gonna put it all into the fuse box now so that you can get a little better idea. I know it's kind of hard to tell when uh, you've got these laying side by side but at least you know where each of the four wires is going. Let me put it together so you can see it as a whole. Almost done. On the top side, this is what it looks like. The two relays and the two fuses are in place. And when you flip it over, you can see where the wiring, uh, try to get it at an angle where you can catch each wire. The lower reds are in the 30 position and they go to hot, so they're each fused. And over to the right, you can see where they're uh, each has, goes to a 30 amp fuse. Going clockwise in this direction, uh, you've got the low speed fan along with the trigger for the air conditioning to come on. Up here, you've got the high speed fan. At the top positions, this is the one, uh, the fan that's gonna be low speed. And this is the fan that's gonna be high speed. And to the right are the grounds. This goes to the inner fender well, where it's grounded. Following these wires down, I've got two power wires, and they're going to go up here to this stub out, where the alternator's at. And then you've got the actual plug down here that plugs into the harness that comes off. Kind of hard to do with one hand. Uh, this is the plug that goes into the fans that are already attached, and two grounds that will attach to the radiator core support. I'm gonna put all that together and then we'll come back and we'll look at each part again. Uh, I'm running out of conduit, so I've only got a short piece here you know, on the power wires, just so it'll protect it as I mount it up here against the wall and it comes out this hole here on the side. It, the wires are protected from the sharp edges of the metal. I'll have to get some more conduit, but it'll be mounted right here and I think it's gonna look pretty good. Let me go ahead and get it mounted up and we'll uh, take a last look at it. Here's the box mounted up. That about winds it up on the wiring of the truck. But the only thing left is to get rid of this bunch of wires that we've been cut off the old, off the old wiring harness and dispose of that. And that's about it. Otherwise, it's pretty much wired up. Uh, our next major project is going to be the exhaust system, and we're going to start on that uh, very quickly. And I've got all the parts over there, and I'll show you that when we get to it in the next video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the thumbs up, and we'll catch you in the next video when we do the exhaust.